Welcome back for part two of a conversation on spirituality, but maybe not the spirituality that you are thinking of. Last week, we dove deep into this idea of spirituality and religion. You might've heard people say, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Maybe you think that for yourself, but together, what if we could first acknowledge that we are all on a spiritual journey together? And together, what if we could maybe even think about spirituality and Christianity not being opposites, but as something that can work together, can go together and can live together to provide a deeper and richer faith? What if? Yeah. Well, we when we left off, uh, the last time we had just gotten into this um, idea about Christianity and what Christianity has to offer in uh, almost like a postmodern world. And um, I was doing some reading about modernism and postmodernism, and modernism seems to be my generation's way of, of hanging on and wanting to look at things. And it's this idea that there's this black and white, there's, there's either or, you're in, you're out, um, it's the truth or it's a lie. And, and, and 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 there there's value in that, and I, I don't like to disclaim that. And and religion seems to almost like we put that card in that box. Mm-hmm. And then here comes postmodernism, and spirituality has this upsurge, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and, and forward, with some backlashes of uh, fundamentalism in, in and along the way. Um, but. How does that come into uh, this idea of what Jesus is trying to teach us? And was he the original, you know, spiritual OG, <laughs> so to speak? I don't know. What do y'all think? Yes, he was the OG spiritual Christian dude walking around. I don't know. I like that image. Just <laughs> hanging with a chain OG. I like it. <laughs> he's he's the trailblazer though, right? He is. He is a trailblazer. You know, and I, I was thinking about it as you were talking this idea of Jesus had his religious structures, right? I mean, we know that he recognized Sabbath and he recognized the the festivals of, of, of his own traditions. But yet what he did is he infused a spirituality in those that was that was somewhat unique. Um, it was fresh. Yeah, well, yeah, it's because he talked about living water, yeah. for example. It's about yeah. and, and 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 that's I think what he was trying to get at was there's there's something missing in this that and, and maybe what is missing was that spirituality, mm-hmm. the awokeness, the aliveness, the yeah. uh, the quickening of the spirit to to um, infuse uh, the the ritual with meaning. Yeah, and I think it's important to say especially my generation, we really need to acknowledge this. Rituals are not bad. Routines, the the traditions regarding religion is not, those are not bad. And um, I think we kind of have a bad taste on our mouth regarding those things because we've seen people use those as just crutches of, of check boxes to mark off. But um, really, as Jesus exemplifies, you know, there's power and meaning behind rituals um, when and when done with the purpose and intentionality behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we've got to acknowledge that rituals are not bad, mm-hmm. but um, rituals were never meant to be the 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 top. That was not to be the end all, be all. For, it was supposed to. I, I guess it was supposed to be a means of grace, especially a, starting with an illiterate mm-hmm. populace and a sign, and, a, a, a yeah. pointing toward something else. Yeah. yeah. But Jesus Jesus uses this beautiful agricultural example of I think there was a like I said a, a temple vine sculpture and so he I don't know if he was just standing there he's like, hmm, "I don't think I'll talk about that." But or maybe he was out at a vineyard and he said, "You're you are I'm the vine and you're the branch." And so there seems to be this idea that um that we can borrow from spirituality of an inner experience with Jesus that it, and the spirit of of living in the present and walking in the presence of God because he wouldn't say it if we couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I feel like you can borrow uh, some of maybe the the spiritual practices that are, have started to become really uh, more prevalent in in uh, Christian um, orthopraxy, so to speak, of you know 
uh, contemplative prayer, centering prayer, devotions. Um, you know, we, we, we've, we've always had the quiet time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I grew up with the quiet time. I have And man, journals. if you did not do your quiet time, you were a bad Christian. You should read some of my journals when I'm younger. Um, the quiet time was it for me. And it was this thing where I... I would have my quiet time with Jesus and I would close that journal and I would close that Bible. And it was almost as if I closed off the presence of God because Mm. the rest of the day (laughs) was just Michelle as good as she could be, but maybe not so good. (laughs) And, you know, yeah, it it was, and and that, that's a, I think a pretty universal experience or can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but but <laughs> this this branch was off the vine. <laughs> well, and that was, that's my point, right? Is that it doesn't get off the vine, and so um, so it doesn't. You know, the the vine, the branch stays connected to the vine even when that quiet that's time grace. is over. Mm-hmm. And so how? I mean, uh, how? Yeah, it's that because everybody's like, oh, well, if you feel you don't feel the presence of God, guess who moved? And I'm like. Well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that I moved. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to move. But I think that's grace I, for us as, yeah. as as Christians. That's what I hold on to is that's the grace of God continuing to move towards us even when we don't feel feel connected to the vine. You know, we just we we just got some new grass in our front yard, and right now all you see are the squares, and it does not look like a cohesive front yard. You just see these big fat squares, and they're not cohesive, but they're planting roots, they're gonna dig deep into the soil and they're gonna be connected to one another. And so then soon you won't see the the new different patches of grass. It'll all be one, hopefully beautiful green lawn. And I think that that's the way with, uh, with, with us personally. So often, even when we don't feel connected, that's the vine is still connected to us, still digging, planting roots in the soil of our lives, even when we can and can't see it. That's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. Uh, I I think it's very accurate. Mm -hmm. And I I do feel like there's the more you do this life with God, the more it just becomes um, who you are. Uh, N.T. Wright says it's this um, cleaned up new identity infused with the power of the Spirit going out to bring heaven on earth. Mm. And um, I really really like that. Um, It's not just... uh, contemplation but it's contemplation uh and action it's 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 your sacred text and your sacred beliefs and your sacred leaders Mm -hmm. but but without all the you know cleaned up and and uh made right but i think it's also why we cannot separate spirituality and religion we can't they just it doesn't work when they're separated you know because if you se- if you if you separate religion out of spirituality then you lose you lose so much you lose you lose community I think you lose, you know, and, and you lose tradition and um and mm-hmm. you lose and so and I don't know about you, but I I'm I'm not the smartest person in the world. And so I I lean into the the wisdom of others who've gone before me and the mm-hmm. the spiritual depth of others who've gone before me. And so there's value in leaning into those individuals as well. So I think so and if we if we separate spirituality from religion, that's what I would tell someone who's who's struggling with that, if who's maybe wanting to keep those separate because they've maybe been hurt or felt threatened by the so many by the have. church. Absolutely, but I, I would I would say to them is that um, you know I, I, it's hard it is hard to practice spirituality in community um, because of differing beliefs and differing values and um, just playing out different personalities. <laughs> but um, but at the same time, that is the soil in which our our we grow. That is the soil that yeah. that 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 and it's it's that interconnectedness that exists there and that's the value in it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can I can go play basketball. I can go to basketball court, and and I can enjoy, you know, just shooting around and 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 shooting some some baskets and doing that. But then if I got some some other guys that want to come along and we put a game together, 
that, that, that brings it to a whole nother level. It's the structure of the game. It's the structure of the rhythm of the game and the rules that we play by. And so, um, and so it, it takes that just shooting around in a basket. That's kind of what spirituality is to me. It's just by myself on a basketball court, shooting some baskets, but then you, you introduce religion into it. And then you've got, you're still on the court and you're still shooting baskets, but all of a sudden you've got a dynamic that it is a communal dynamic. Yes. Which bounces to me, um, this idea that we have uh, in Christianity uh, a pretty unique concept of a Trinitarian God, which also reminds me of my triangle from a couple weeks ago where you've got the God worship each other and where and forgiveness is this triangle. And then yet again, we have a God in, in three persons, uh, God, the Father, and Jesus, the Son, and the Spirit. Um, so it just is interesting to me that we grow more in community with a communal God. Mm-hmm. Yes, and it, it, you see it it's so no accident, much in right? the <laughs> pandemic. We all were isolated in the mm-hmm. pandemic. And then, you know, like two weeks in, we're all like, I got to get out of my house. And like, I miss people. And, uh-huh. and that is so, de- from my Christian perspective, that is because we were people who were made to be in a relationship with one another because we have a relational God. And spirituality can is, is something that um, we like to think can be done in isolation, but what happens when you're isolated? Mm-hmm. You close in, you become inward focus. It becomes very, it can become very egocentric. Um, and religion helps us remember that there is something wider to the world and to our faith and to our spirituality than just me, myself, and I and how I'm engaging in the world. And, and it makes me think of, here's my Methodist brain coming out, but United Methodists believe in something um, that we have weirdly called the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's just the way that we engage in, in the work of theological things. And, and we understand that our faith is made up of, think of a stool, you know, scripture, we, we, we hold deeply uh, our, our, our faith in scripture. But scripture is supported by three legs, one leg of tradition, one leg of reason, and one leg of experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that being able to go, you know, I don't know about this. So let me go see what my tradition has said about this before. Or this has been my experience, but let me let me also throw in reason and vice versa. And that has been so helpful. And now we're getting to the point, and we've seen this throughout centuries as well, of, of ways that we've gone, you know, our tradition has gotten that wrong as we lean more into our experience and we we dig deeper into scripture and we look more at at at, at you know our reasonable side of things you know oh women can be preachers or oh slavery is bad and mm. it, it, those things help us um, wait we changed our minds yeah whoa, whoa <laughs> we changed our minds and it's because of this so experience that, happens, that we've yeah. had in community. Mm-hmm. And that's- Probably wouldn't happen alone. Maybe. No. Yeah. But God does raise up prophets. And sometimes those prophets are a lone voice, mm-hmm. but they speak to community. So- They speak to the institution. The, they're usually the not very popular structure. though at first. No. 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 And, 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 and we love to kill our prophets, if, yeah. if not physically, verbally, and shut them down. Mm-hmm. Especially in today's world. I mean, with- um, Hashtag canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so, uh, but here I, I was, as Jenny was talking, I was thinking, you know, I, I'm wondering too if, um, if people who are having a hard time with religion, which we know there is, I mean, I forget what the, st- the statistic is now. I mean, it's, you know, the nuns, we call them of, of the world. N O N E S, not nuns, like N U N. The nuns and then the duns, people who have yeah. left, but I, who I don't, just, I, it's not for them anymore. But let's not dismiss. Um, that that group because I think there's still a spiritual element to many Absolutely. of those. And so I, I think if I was to speak into someone who associates with either a nun, N-O-N-E, or a dun mindset is that, and if you're having a hard time with religion, spirituality with relationship is what I think I would, you know, if you're having a hard time with the the institution, then let's start with, forming relationships. Um, and so- Would you do that in like a, just a small group and and maybe, 
is it, it I mean, it's like, is is there a little yeast of Christianity in that group? I mean, you know, it's like, um, I mean, because, you know, I'm not going to let go of the doctrines and the the truth telling and that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, I, but I think you got to approach it as a journey and approach it as a... And a relationship, like really authentic relationship, not like, come join my group so I can convert you. Yeah. The listening yeah. ear yeah. with your agenda. Like I really aside. do care about you as a human being, whether yes. you adopt my belief or not. And I think that that's what we've got to get back to is what are those, before we can even start to have that kind of conversation, we got to get back to the fundamental of a basic, I see you that you are a human. <laughs> well, how did Jesus do it with Peter? That's how you ended the, a couple weeks ago. Remember how he oh. did, how he restored Peter? Mm-hmm. Will you tell that again? By extending forgiveness. Mm-hmm. On the I, beach, I, he yeah, says I mean, we could, what? Well, we could. Do we you could, love me? Yeah, do you, and he asked him three times because he denied him three times. Mm-hmm. But I would go all the way back to, um, and I think Jenny mentioned this story, the John 4 story, the woman at the, the well. I mean, she had been, and we don't really know the whole story. We just know that because she's, at the well, alone in the new in the she's hottest. At, she's sort of an outcast, social outcast. S- yes, she is. Yeah. She and um and so she has she is in isolation or she mm-hmm. is in separation. I guess mm-hmm. is a better word. And so yet Jesus meets her there. He meets her, and 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 there's everything against him being in connection with her, but yet he overcame all of those things and things that his his religion says that he shouldn't associate with her, Samaritan, a female, all those things. And if potentially if she was an outcast for some reason. And so all those reasons, and yet he he did not allow his his religion to be the barrier to see her as a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's spirituality. That's that's, that's what it means good to spirituality. bring. spirituality. That's what it means to bring to bring a faithful spirituality into your religion. And yes. I think that's what he's asking of all of us. The father said speak to her. He said he had to go to Samaria. He had to go. Yeah. And he I you th- I, I get the impression that he he went thinking who is it I'm supposed to talk to and here she came. Mm-hmm. You know just that moment by moment listening to the spirit. Um, and obeying the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So back to our religion of obedience, when the Spirit speaks, we should act. Amen. Yeah. So how does that end for us, Jenny? This is good. (laughs) Here's here's just my final thought. You know, I, I do believe that spirituality and Christianity can coincide and coexist. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think healthy Christianity does have a level of spirituality, as we've said. But here's my here's my challenge. For those of you who say that you're spiritual but not religious, start, as we said, with a small group, creating those relationships. But just be mindful. What we are not saying is we are not saying to go back to a religious institution um, that is harmful to your well-being. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. So I just, I feel like that's important to put, put that out there. Yeah. Um, so if you have questions about that, what that might look like, or you need help finding that community where you can go back as you're, uh, and engage in these conversations, we would- Safely. Safely. Mm-hmm. We would like to be on that journey with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we would love to continue this conversation with you. So feel free to email us at info at gfumc.com, or you can message us on whatever platform you're listening to, or if you're watching this, you can put it in the comments below. But together, what if we were able to be people who acknowledge that we are all on a spiritual journey together and that Christ is moving even in our midst on this journey, bringing us closer to wholeness as a society, as an individual person, as a community. Together, what if? Thanks, guys. Some scars, but that's how you